So my name is Kristen Tarquinio. I am our Director of Digital Media at Eastern Gateway Community College. And welcome to our Fire Science Forum. Um, we are having this in honor of 9-11 and all the firefighters, first responders, and civilians that lost their lives that day. Um, I want to start by introducing our amazing panel. So I'm going to start with Dr. DiCarlo. He is our program director of our fire science program. Thank you, Carl. And then we have um, Bill Mastriani. He is the director of operations for the Ohio Association of Professional Firefighters. Thank you for being here, Bill. And then we have William Palma, who is the lieutenant at Rescue Company 3 in Youngstown, and he's also a student in our fire science program. So welcome, gentlemen, and thank you so much for participating in this forum with us. It's good to be here. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to kick today off with just asking each of you, um, and we can go from Carl to William to Bill, um, how long you have been in the fire service? I've been in the fire service just over 27 years now. Started out as a volunteer, um, then joined the career ranks. I've also been a firefighter for 27 years. Um, Carl, I don't know where you work because your hair is a lot more gray than mine is after 27 years. So, you know, God bless you. <laughs> um, my first few were um, on a part-time department in the city I grew up in that my mom still lives in, and the last 22 have been in the city of Euclid. Yeah, I'm going into my 21st year um, in emergency services. I started as an EMT in 1999 and uh, got my paramedic in 2001, and I never really expected to go the fire route. I was um, thinking about just making a career as a paramedic, and uh joined a department, a smaller department in Trumbull County here in Ohio as just a medic and uh, went on some fire calls with those guys and a combination of watching all the fun they were having and kind of feeling helpless to help them out kind of got me to decide to give it a shot and I went to fire school and uh, in 2006 became a firefighter. I've uh, been professional uh, since 2008 with the city of Youngstown, uh, promoted about six years ago to lieutenant, um, which is where I'm at now. So. Awesome. Um, as firefighters and first responders, what sticks out to you guys in your memory most about 9-11? I, I, I vividly remember um, the station I was at, the people I was working with, and just kind of the un, um, an unbelievable visual, right, of, of what was going on. And then um, experiencing the immediate change um, was, uh, it was quick. And then comprehending the, the amount of loss in New York and uh, in Shanksville uh, in Washington, D.C. was, I recall that as well. For me, watching it that morning, first thing that came to mind is, one, I want to be there. I, I want to be there with those guys. If that happened in my city, I know they'd want to be there with me. And then the Eccles the, the selfless acts of the, the bravery and courage that these men and women showed responding there. You, you see the trucks going across the bridge. The first plane already hit. The second plane hit. A lot of those people knew they weren't coming back that day. And they still went. I think to a man, the, the, the three of us, Carl and uh, William, we wanted to be there. Um, so that, that's what came to mind is I, I wanted to be there. If something happens in Euclid, I want to be there. Um, so that, that was, that was tough watching that unfold and feeling helpless that I couldn't help any of those guys out. Bill, I think you hit the nail on the head there. I mean, you just kind of described exactly what I had in my head to just talk about right now is that helpless feeling. I actually was sleeping. I was working private EMS at the time. I had worked a midnight shift before and um, got home at about six in the morning, went to bed. And uh, my roommate at the time came running into my room. I, I don't even remember what time. It was already once the event was kind of already going a little bit. And I just remember coming out and, you know, the TV was on. And I can honestly say it's one of the few days of my life that I've either watched TV or listened to the radio for the entirety of the day. Um, got back on duty. And like you said, Bill, I, I wanted to go. I, I felt like I, I needed to do something. And I mean, I mean, I guess, you know, you end up, you only can do what you can do, make the best you can in the community you serve at that time. Um, the private EMS company I was with at the time, they were sending trucks there 
that night. And I made a plea as I could to try to get on board to go. And no one that was on duty was allowed to, to participate because we had to obviously cover our coverage areas. So, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that kind of sums up the day. Helpless, wanting to do something, wanting to make a difference in some way and not being able to do a whole lot, which was very frustrating. Sure. To the points mm-hmm. you guys are making, I, I think there's so many um, images that stick out from that day, but some... There was the, the, the awful and the sad, but then right away you had those images of first responders and firefighters. And the one that really sticks out to me, like even talking about it, you just get emotional was the, the firefighters raising the flag. Um, so even now I like have chills and like could start crying and I'm not going to, but um, that those images, I can't imagine just even as, I mean, I was 18 then, but the brotherhood that is firefighters, I can, I, I imagine that you guys all wanted to be there. So I'm sure that was very tough. So we actually sent from my home local, the city of Euclid. I want to say there were five individuals who drove there that evening or the next morning, and they were on the pile for a couple of days. Um, the pictures they brought back was just devastating absolutely devastating and it it made you want to be there even more but you're also thanking god that you weren't right yeah bill did those guys end up with any health problems after the fact you know just we have one of our guys who went um he's now the third northeast ohio firefighter that i know lived a clean life um no alcohol, no tobacco products, no smoking, um, was always wearing the proper PPE. All three have now have cancers um, that I'm pretty sure could be traced back to working on that pile. And I I believe one of them is being covered by the Zadroga Act, so which is good. And that act is supposed to cover all firefighters and all first responders who responded that day. And for however long they were on the pile, but um, one of ours does. Wow. Um, one of ours d- did come down with cancer, occupational cancer, and he's now in remission and back on the job. But yeah, one of our guys did. Oh. The lingering effects of that day. I mean, they go on and on, you know, and that's just one case in point right mm-hmm. there. You know, wow. I think, I think there is. Go ahead, Bill. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. One of the points I was going to make in um, one of the further questions is, William, like you said, that that ripple effect, there are now more 9-11 related cancer deaths than the 343 firefighters that passed that day from being on, on the pile. There's more cancer related deaths. And that is astonishing, not counting how many families that tore apart, how many suicides, how many substance abuse issues came out of that, the, the, the effect, we're going to feel this effect forever. The probationary firefighters that were hired because of 9-11, I've spoken to some of those guys and they were never treated the same walking in the door as, you know, the three of us because the circumstances which they got hired under and that it, it's crazy. It, it really is. Yeah. I think the stories that, you know, the perspectives that we're hearing today, Chris, and are, are really a rare insight um, into the commitment of the fire service, right? To, to serving others first, others before self. And um, you, you don't hear, we, it's not often talked about publicly, um, but there is an impact. Uh, if we are just human beings, right? But, um, uh, you know, you, you and that service continues today when you see the commitment by the members uh, over the COVID-19, the, the uh, hurricanes and the wildfires in the West. Um, it, it's there today, uh, that commitment to service to others and service to the community. So um, I, I think that's that, that we, ne- we, we can never lo- lose sight of that as we work to offer access to professional development. So we're doing our best to give those group of leaders the best skills that they can develop to solve the community's problems. Great. And that kind of leads into the next question I have for you guys. Um, 
what would you want new firefighters to know about 9-11 and the impact it had on firefighters in the fire service? I would just build on, on, the, on the comment I just, just made is that, um, uh, and I think most of them have this perspective. Uh, I, 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 I believe that, that it's about service to the community, right? And so we have a bond, we have a special bond with the community. They hold us in high regard. Um, they, 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 they treat us well. Um, and in return, we take care of them when, um, when they need help. And, uh, we, um, I, I never lose sight of that. I'm third generation. Um, so it's something I, I, I grew up in. And, um, I, I think that that, that level, the level of service that Bill talked about on nine 11 and the sentiments that both Bill and William shared today, are present in the in the current generations serving. Very well put, and I I, I will tell you I, I think for me the biggest thing I want to make sure is that they understand the depth of what happened that day. I, let's face it, these guys coming in the doors now, most of them were born after the fact, or they were too young to remember it. So we need to make a big deal of it on remembrance of it. And I know I, I teach in a couple local fire academies and whenever we have class on that day, we don't do anything else except remember, well, whether it's watching some videos, talking, discussing, just to reinforce, you know, how devastating that day was and how much things have changed from that day. Um, everything from the way we operate on fire grounds to the way we communicate. I mean, the, the changes from that day when like Bill talked about a ripple and there were many ripples and many of them have, have been some positives that have come from this. And uh, we just have to reinforce and we have to let them know that these things are a result of that day. And uh, it's, it's tough to put yourself into the mindset of somebody that went through something or, or like when we talk about, we, we mentioned the Kennedy thing, you know, I can't relate to that like my parents could, but I, by my parents always instilling how, how much of an important day that was, I was able to, to have at least some semblance of that. And I think that's what we need to continue to do with these young firefighters is constantly reinforce it. I agree. This is, I mean, we're going on, you know, 19 years already. Um, I was doing a peer support thing in Coving Covington, Kentucky a couple of years ago, and we were with two FDNY firefighters. And I, I, I won't mention their names, but they were both there on 9-11. And we went to Covington's recruit class, and they asked me to teach a portion of it. it as we walked into that door, I walked up to the grease board and I took the eraser and I went to do this. And as soon as I did this, one of the guys from FDNY said, stop. And I was stopping as he said, stop. And up on their grease board, I don't remember. All I remember is the gentleman's name who made the radio traffic. His name, his nickname was Patty. Um, it was command to such and such vehicle what's your location in patio radioed and I'm paraphrasing we're on the 60th and we're still heading up. That was, that quote was written on this grease board. And one of the guys from FDNY I was with, that was one of his best friends. And he heard that transmission on the rig he was responding in. And that was Patty's last transmission ever. And these students, this was three years ago. Um, they're reading about this in history books and seeing it on TV. Now this brother I was with lived that was there that day. And we're going 16 years when this happened a few years ago. And um, the guy from FDNY had to walk away. He remembered, he put himself in that position, remember that exact radio transmission and broke down and thanked those kids for remembering and it was just it, it it really is crazy um i brought home from my office in columbus yesterday i was shipped a fdny job shirt didn't fit me um, i gave it to my 16 year old son he wore that thing 
like it was his, you know, teddy bear when he was a baby. He knew the impact from reading about it, learning about it, watching it on TV. Just he's got my fire department stuff that he doesn't wear and doesn't feel as good in that. But he wore that FD, FDNY job shirt with pride. All right. So I'm going to move on to our next question. This one actually is for um, William. How does the fire science program at EGCC um, enhance your career as a firefighter? Well, um, I'd have to say in many different ways. Um, the one thing about the program is the majority of us that are in it are currently working in our career already. And I, I, I think one of the biggest things for me is being able to take those things that I'm learning and immediately apply them to what I'm doing. Um, I, I really appreciate that, um, especially in terms of a lot of the things we are learning about with leadership uh, management um, getting out of our comfort zones. Uh, most of us in the fire service on medium sized departments or whatever, you can end up being kind of in your specialty. Um, I've worked in fire suppression only my entire career. So we're learning about aspects of fire prevention, um, legal aspects, management, um, along with a lot of good refreshers on those things we haven't probably thought about in a long time, like building construction and things like that. So being able to take that stuff and not wait until you graduate, like a lot of traditional students would have to do, but being able to apply that stuff um, directly while you're working in your career to me has been probably the best benefit. Um, other than that, I mean, we, I'm a non-traditional student. Um, 43 years old. So getting back into the classroom for me, I'm not going to lie to you. I was, I was nervous last fall when I began this journey. It's been a long time. And I could say that it's been, uh, it's been great. Uh, the, the professors, Dr. DiCarlo, they do a really good job of kind of guiding you through the process of the program, um, helping you out with the paper writing and the APA format, which um, is uh it's something I never even heard of that. When I was, uh, when I went to college back in the nineties, we didn't have anything like that going on at Youngstown State University, but so that was a learning curve for me, but they work you through it. They get you to where you're at the point where you're comfortable with it. Um, they do a really good job with that. Um, the other thing is the ability to do it online. And let's face it, all of us in the fire service, we're busy people. Um, you're doing your full-time job. You've got a full-time family at home. You've got side jobs, part-time jobs. So the ability to have the online base course, um, it has a nice combination of the flexibility to, through the week, do your assignments at your own pace during the week, but still have some deadlines that you need to achieve. And I think the nice blend of both of that keeps you on task, but allows you to flexibly build the time in for yourself. And for somebody like me to try to go back to university on campus, um, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, this has really been a really nice way for me to to, to gain knowledge and uh, work towards those goals I have in my own personal and professional life, so. That's great to hear, I love that. And APA style is hard for everyone, so. Yeah. <laughs> and then I took a couple of courses where they switched from APA style to a different style. I can't remember what the name is. Dr. DiCarlo, you would probably know what the other style. Um, MLA. MLA, yeah. So I'm like, okay, let me learn this for this semester. And then, <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back to the APA when we get back to uh, to this spring or this fall, which we're in now. So but, uh, <laughs> it's been good. So. You're going to have to switch to the IPAs later in the day, though, before you, you write right. the APA <laughs> part. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, you got that right. Outstanding. <laughs> so I have a question for Bill. Um, how does the fire science program at EGCC help your union members? You know, first and foremost, it's a, a lot of people in the fire service, a lot of our members say, what does the union do for us? Well, William just gave a great testimonial on just one of the things the union does for its members, for the, the state organization, the OAPFF, I think in the four years that we've been doing the, the partnership with EGCC and the higher education, we probably put close to a thousand of our members and their family through college, 
for free. A benefit of being a union member, um, you know, with uh, local governments cutting their budgets over the past year, especially since 2011, um, the local government funds have been decimated. Um, probably no other area in the state hurt harder by these cuts than Youngstown and the Youngstown Fire Department. So our education money has been cut out of our budgets, has been cut out of our contracts. We're, we're professionals, but we're blue collar workers. We make a decent, honest living, but to put ourselves through college, you know, like William said, at 41, 42 years old, the funds on our, uh, aren't always there. So this benefit through the union, it's, it's priceless. I mean, it's saving a boatload of money to our members um, that our members can reinvest into the communities they work in, the communities they live in. It's, it's a fantastic program. And I, I think what makes me most proud is the, obviously the easy access. You can do it at any time you want, three o'clock in the morning, on duty, off duty. Um, you're not held to being in that seat at that any given time. Like William said, we're all we all have extra jobs. We're all doing stuff. We're, we're husbands, we're fathers, we're out in the communities. Um, it being free is a great benefit, but I think what lends why I'm most proud of it is the credibility this program has through EGCC is that it was developed by firefighters for firefighters. Um, Dr. Carlo, the Carlo worked endless hours to get this pushed through to the curriculum that the state union wanted. His tireless work on this makes me proud because he's a retired firefighter. He knows what we need. He knows what we want. And Eastern Gateway allowing the union and Dr. DiCarlo to run with this, I think makes me most proud. It, it gives instant credibility that Dr. DiCarlo is a retired firefighter running this program for us. Yeah, it is amazing. Dr. DiCarlo, you've done a heck of a job with that program. And one of the things that I love, um, I came from enrollment services, so I got to talk to your union members and them being like, okay, so I can do the fire science program. And you're sure that my wife can go back for teacher education. You're sure that my son can do business management. Like, I'm like, yeah, it's unlimited. And they, they're just like floored by it. Like they hear it from you, they hear it from their union. But then when they talk to us, um, the, the sense of gratitude and seeing them succeed is it's just, it's an amazing partnership that, uh, you know, EGCC is just as proud um, of it. So I just wanted to let you guys know that because it's really cool seeing that side. And I love answering the question. So it's fun. Good. Thank you. Yes. You know, Kristen, um, just to kind of build on what Bill said. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that uh, I had this opportunity to be here at Eastern Gateway and to work with the OAPFF. Um, I'm very proud to be associated with the group that helped develop this program. Um, and, and I feel a deep sense of personal commitment uh, to, the, to the firefighters that enter the program to make sure they have access to quality training, right? And so, um, so it goes, it, it's, um, I think this, this program is, um, could be the benchmark for some of the other interactions between uh, the unions and the college, right? So, I mean, we, we really came together with a, a diverse stakeholder group. Uh, started at a certain point and then a transition to really where I think everybody is happy with it. So it's, it's been a fantastic experience for me. And um, um, I, I'd also like to point out the, the, the adjunct faculty that we have. They're just outstanding. They're practitioners, they're tenured, they're experienced. Um, I'm, I'm proud to be associated with them. And then I think the final component are the, the, the folks that enroll in the program. There are some quality, quality people uh, in the program. They, they're there because they want to learn. Uh, they want to be able to serve their community better um, and they want to grow. And, and so it's all the way around. It's just, it's one of the best experiences I've had in my career. And so uh, I couldn't ask for a better way uh, to, uh, to finish out a career. Does anybody else have anything they want to say before we sign off? 
You know, we got a lot of info out of some firefighters, which can be I a just, hard task. <laughs> yeah. Like William had stated um, about Kennedy, I wasn't around when Kennedy was assassinated. Um, 9-11 is my Pearl Harbor. It's my Kennedy. It's we had just that that happened on a Tuesday morning. I remember sitting in the chair at home. I just put my one-year-old daughter down for a nap. Um, I had just got home from a long weekend of playing softball in Baltimore with firefighters from across the country, specifically having a good time with the FDNY guys, with the Yonkers guys, guys from Jersey, that entire weekend telling, telling stories, talking about memories. And I got home Sunday night, went through Monday, trying to recover. Um, Tuesday morning, some of those guys and girls we played softball with and just had a good time with over the, the past weekend from Thursday to Sunday aren't coming back. That That's an eye opener that I know it sounds cliche, but, you know, kiss and hug your family, say goodbye um, each morning when you go to shift and just make sure they know that they're the most important ones that are around because those tones go off. You may not come back from them. And again, it sounds cliche, but 343 of our brothers and sisters didn't come back that day. And we need to keep their memory alive by remembering and honoring them moving forward. Agreed. Absolutely. Well said. Hey, Kristen, could I, could I just share one more? It's, it's odd. It's, so I don't ever remember talking um, in a public forum like this, right? Um, or what's going to be in a public forum. Most of the time, these conversations take place in the firehouse, at the kitchen table, or at someone's house, you know, the group of uh, people that you're on the job with, you that normally you associate with. Um, but one of the aspects I'd like to point out about the degree is, um, and so Bill, Bill and I and uh, Dr. Kessler started this journey about two years ago. And one of the things when I first met Bill, one of the things that um, he surfaced early on in the conversation was uh, the, the, the um, interest in, in focusing the degree on firefighter health and safety. And so um, I had a list of things that Bill had, had identified as important for the degree, and I was working through those, and I was at the top of the list. And, and so we, keeping that focus, um, we have two classes within um, our degree program. One is health and safety occupational health and safety and emergency services. And the other one is safety and survival in emergency services. So, so two classes focused on one on occupational health, which is physical fitness, mental wellness, uh, overall wellness. Um, and so it's, it's, um, uh, it's a strong curriculum. It's, it's geared towards helping uh, uh, the, the professionals navigate the exposure to the cancer, the, the things that have been surfaced here among this group. Um, and then the safety and survival really gets into the um, firefighter uh, life safety initiatives. And we talk about, um, you know, what, what we can do as, as uh, practitioners to transition the career even to a safer environment, right? And so to limit the, the cancer, um, how research is going to benefit us, community risk reduction. And so I think that that, um, I think that that distinguishes our program from, from some of the others is that that focus back on um, on the firefighters and the practitioners, right? And, and so hopefully when they leave the program um, uh, and, and the faculty teaching that program, they're, it's, we have a, a gentleman um, um, from the Cleveland area who is a health and safety officer and it's a passion of his. So that the passion for that and the commitment to the um, brothers and sisters really is just woven through the fabric of both of those classes. And so I, I probably said more here in this half hour than I've, I don't know, than I've said in a long time, but. I think that's an important aspect, and, and that is reflective of the collaboration between the different stakeholders. It's when, when the community college and, the, OA, and the, the practitioners, in this case the OAPFF, when we come together and put our minds to it, and the organization, uh, the, the, the college created an atmosphere that let us go and just you know, um, implement the curriculum that we needed. This is, the, this, is the, this is what you see. This is a product of that ability to collaborate um, and leverage both both the academy 
and and the practitioner side of the house. And so I just wanted to point that out. I think it's uh, I think it's an important distinction and it's reflective of our concern for those who serve the community. I, I think if I may add to Dr. DiCarlo's um, comments there, thank you, Carl, um, for Eastern Gateway to put in classes devoted to those topics is, is a testament to the work that everybody's put into this. When cancer is the leading cause of death in firefighters, and there's no classes dedicated to that, that's wrong. When I went to the academy 27 years ago, we didn't talk about cancer. The more dirty you are, the tougher you were. Now we know that's not true. And for the, the, the community college to make a commitment to us to devote a class to that is fantastic. And then one step further, when there's about 100 line of duty deaths a year, the traumatic line of duty deaths, and there's more than two times the amount of deaths from suicide, that behavioral health aspect that Dr. DiCarlo pushed for and Eastern Gateway got on board with is so, so important. We don't talk enough to the older firefighters, the old crusty guys who don't get it, but the fact that we're instilling this in the new recruits and classes actually dedicated to it, that's one of the reasons I'm most proud to be a part of this program is the community college listened. And that's a testament to the commitment Eastern Gateways made to its students and the union. Just to add a little bit to that as well, as a student going through it now, I, I just took both of those courses, I believe, over spring semester. And there were many times during the writing my papers, researching that I thought to myself, man, I need to, this is stuff when I, when I talked about being able to apply things to the job immediately, it's the perfect case in point. Like these things that we're learning in the program about what we need to do to keep ourselves safe as much as we can and the changes that need to be pushed for in our line of work in terms of cancer prevention and, and, and even other things like um, when you, when we did our classes on, we need to push for change in building code and things like that. All of these things, it, they don't really get talked about a whole lot in the fire service right now. And these are, we, we all know the fire service trying to get change sometimes is, extremely difficult. We are very set in the way we do things. The tradition, which is tradition is wonderful, but it makes it difficult to enact change. And there were so many times during going through that, those two different classes, especially that I thought to myself, this is stuff I need to start applying to my job right now and get the word out. And the more people that we can get to see that by getting into this program and taking those courses and actually seeing that there is real research to what people are saying, the better off we're all going to be as a fire service in general. And, um, and it doesn't matter if you're from Ohio or Nebraska or Washington, these are affecting all of us across the country and across the world. And um, it's, it's that important. And it's, it's very, it's been very, very uh, refreshing to see that that push for this kind of stuff in this program. I will say that as a student coming through. So, Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for um, this unique lens into um, firefighting and your perspectives on 9-11 and the fire science program. We really appreciate you sharing this with us and thank you again for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Be safe, guys. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Thanks, Bill. Thanks, guys. Thank you.